This is the second video on how to decrypt the Visionaire cipher. The first video was about if you know the key. In this video, I'm going to talk about what happens when you do not know the key for the Visionaire cipher. How do you crack in that case? There are two steps. One, find the key length. You have to know how long the key is, if the key is three numbers long or ten numbers long. Um, step two is you have to find each number in the key. Once you know how long it is, you have to figure out what the numbers are. In order to find the key length, first thing you have to do is write out your ciphertext. So this is my ciphertext that I want to find out what it says. What I'm going to do is I'm going to literally rewrite the ciphertext only one over. So our ciphertext is V, V, H, Q, etc. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just scooting it over one place. So I just literally rewrote the exact same thing, the ciphertext, only one over and in nice little lines. Um, I didn't write the last G right here. Um, should be JG, I just wrote the J. That's okay, we can just go ahead and stop at the um, end of the line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write it again, and I'm going to scoot it over one more time. So I started here before, and now I'm going to start here. So again, I just wrote the ciphertext out, only one place farther over. Now I'm going to do it again. So at this point, you're probably getting the pattern. I'm going to write it quite a few times and just keep moving over each time. So you can see I just kept going and moved it over one space each time. You can stop when you've either got a lot of rows, you run out of letters, or in my case I ran out of colors. So once we have that, what we want to look for is what we call coincidences. Um, so a coincidence is when you have the same thing in your top row in the same place that you have it in the next row. For instance, we have a V here and we have a V right below it. That's a coincidence. Uh, let's look for any more. Oh, we've got another one here. That's a coincidence. Yeah, that's it for that row. So this row has two coincidences. The purple row has two coincidences. All right, now let's look at the green row. Remember, we're comparing the top one, the blue one, with the green one, not the purple and the green, the blue and the green. All right, so let's look and see if any of these match. So let's look and see if any in the blue and green row match. H and V, Q and V, blue. I go all the way down, and what I see is right here. See, I'm looking at this G and this G right here. Um, I don't care about the purple row right now, but the blue row and the green row uh, both have a G in the same place, so this row has one coincidence. All right, let's compare the blue row and the red row now. This row does not have anything in common with the blue row, so let's try the next one, orange. All right, so we have one in this case. Now let's move on to the next row. And I'm going to go ahead and count all the rows. Hopefully I don't make any mistakes. Sorry if I do, they're hard to catch. But I'm going to basically count, see V and V here. I'm going to count the coincidences for every row I have. Okay, now that I have um, counted the number of coincidences, what I want to do is look for numbers that are particularly large. Um, in this case, our ciphertext was really short. This is actually considered short. Normally you need a lot of text to be accurate about this. But you can see that right here is a bigger number and right here is a bigger number. Um, we have twos in both cases instead of ones and zeros. That's a little better. Now what we want to do is count how often big numbers occur. So right now we have here and then one, two, three, four. So four places later another big number occurs. Therefore, we would conclude that the key has a length of 4. Now, normally, you, like I said, you get bigger numbers. Like if you had, like, see, this is more like what you want to see. Um, 
Like, so you've got a big number here, and then one, two, three, four spots later, you've got another big number, you've got 30, 25, and then one, two, three, four spots later, you've got a 40. Those are all much bigger than uh, zero, one, five, six even. Um, so that's a little bit more what you want to be looking for, but in this example, the ciphertext was very short. It would take a very long time to write it all out. Therefore, we have smaller numbers. However, you can sort of see a pattern there, so we would assume the length to the key for this message is four digits long, or four numbers long. Step two, finding the actual numbers. Once you know the length of the key, you have to figure out what the numbers in the key are. But before I can show you how to do that, I have to convince you of a mathematical concept and how it works. All right, so let's say you have the numbers one, two, and five. Now you want to multiply each of these numbers with one, two, and five. How do you get the largest possible number if we want to add them up? Like I could say, um, if I did one times two, two times one, and five times five. That could be an option, uh, two times one, so that would be two plus two plus 25. All right, so we have 29. Now let's try a different combination. Let's try five and one, two and five, and one and two. All right, so then we've got two plus 10, plus five, and that will equal 17. Now, we can do a whole lot of different um, options. We can mix them, match them up uh, lots of different ways, but the way we're going to get the largest number is if we do the largest with the largest, that's five with five, then the next with the next, two with two, and then the smallest with the smallest. Now, let me show you, that would be 25, plus 4 plus 1 equals 30. So you'll notice that this is greater than 17 and 29. It'll also be greater than any of the other combinations you try. So you have to get them in the right order aligned with each other in the same order in order for it to produce the largest number. Now that you understand that you have to put them in the same order and multiply them to get the biggest possible number, I can explain to you how the vision error cipher decryption works because it's based um, very strongly on that principle. I'll come back to that math principle in a bit, but first we have to do something with the message. This is the encrypted message that we are attempting to decrypt. Now, first what we have to do, uh, let's just say this is just the very beginning of a message because you would need a very long message in order to make this work. The length is four, let's say. We already determined that in the previous step. So therefore, we're going to take every fourth letter. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And then it would um, keep going like that. And that is going to be used to find all the letters that I would box in, the fourth letter, all the way down to the very end of the message, assuming you had a very long message we would, um, we're going to use this to find the first number in the key. So we know that right now that the key is one, two, three, four. Four things that we don't know, that we have to fill in the blanks for. Now, there's one other thing we know. In this case, we're using an alphabet with three letters, A, B, C, for simplicity's sake. And we know that the frequencies in this uh, language for these letters are 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.7 for A, B, and C respectively. So that's what we start out knowing about the alphabet, and this is what we knew from the last step. I started with one, two, three, um, every fourth letter because it was length four, and what these are going to do is fill this blank. So what I would do is I would pull down all these letters in this case, I have one of each, but let's say I went through and I counted them. Let's say I went through an entire message and I counted and I found that there were 
50 A's, there were 200 B's, there were 25 C's. Okay, so I went through every fourth letter, added them all together, how many I had of each when counting at every fourth, and ended up with those numbers. Like I said, it needs to be long, um, which is why I'm not counting that many letters. So what we have to do now is determine the frequency of each of these letters in the encrypted um, message. So how we do that? Um, obviously we add these up. Oops. Oh, uh, let's, that's not 200. Let's say that's 125. So that the total is 200. All right, so we have 200. We want to find the frequency of A. So 50 divided by 200 is 0.25. 125 divided by 200 is 0.125. 25, no, excuse me, that goes here. 0.25. Uh, 125 divided by 200 will be 0.625. So those are the frequencies of the letters that we have. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these numbers with these numbers in the correct order, in the order the alphabet goes in. Okay, so I just rewrote those numbers over here. What we're gonna do is we're going to write down the alphabet frequencies of the numbers or the letters in the alphabet in order of the alphabet we are using. So like the English alphabet has certain frequencies, we would write that down in order. Next, we are going to write down these in order. Underneath it, in order of A, B, C. So what we're gonna do with that is we're going to multiply these. Multiply that, that, and that. And then we're going to add each of these numbers up. So when we add them up, I'm going to put it over here. I know that's weird. Okay, so what I did was I multiplied this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. I hope I did that math right, but should be 0.24 approximately. So you can see how I wrote a zero here. That's because I didn't shift this blue row. It was in order of A, B, C. This is A, this was B, this was C of our ciphertext. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the whole thing this direction. So I'm going to take the C and I'm going to move it over one place. I'm going to take the B, I'm going to move it over one. I'm going to take the A and it gets bumped around to the beginning. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I multiply this times this, and then add this times this, and add this times this. And let's see what number I get for that. Okay, so assuming I actually did my multiplication and addition correctly, um, you should get a 0.26 here. And that was with a shift of one. Next, we're going to shift it over again in the same direction. Um, so before we had C, B, and A. Now we're going to take the A, move it over here. Take our C, move it over here. Take our um, B and bump it around to the end. And then I'm going to repeat the process, multiply this times this, this times this, and this times this, and add those three numbers together. Now, once again, assuming I did my math correctly, I got 0.50 uh, for the sum for that one. And that was with a shift of two, with C, B, and A. So, what we can see here from these numbers is that this number, remember that math principle I went over at the beginning, how you have to align them to get the largest possible value? So this number, which, where we got the largest possible value, is where they are aligned, where the true frequencies, these ones, are aligned with the correct frequencies for the um, shift. So we can see that that occurred with a shift of two. Therefore, this number in the first key here, or the first number in the key here, is 2.
because that's what kind of shift it took to get it correctly aligned. So we have the first number for the key. I know it's kind of long, but the other numbers are calculated the same way, with the same process. Only for the second one, we start at the second letter. So we go this one, and then one, two, three, four after that, and then one, two, three, four after that. And then we would take all these letters all the way down to the end of the message that I'm encircling with a red box, and we would count how many A's, how many B's, how many C's, and we would get a total, some number of total letters, and then we would calculate the frequencies, like 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and 0.2, or something like that. And then we would repeat the process using the true values, and remember multiplying it times the correct order, starting with A, B, C, the frequency of A, the frequency of B, the frequency of C, and then shift, and then shift again. Um, if you need to back up in the video and review that process, it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing, only you're just counting the letters that are every fourth letter, starting with the second one. And then you do that and you say, let's, let's say, for instance, that a shift of one. Um, resulted in your largest sum, your largest value, then the shift would go here. And then we would do the process again for, we would count this one, these, we do it again, count them, do the process all over again, fill in this box based on that, those letters. Then we would uh, finally count these letters, same exact process. Do the frequencies, multiply the frequencies, see what makes what shift makes the largest sum, and fill that in with the key there. And therefore, once you have the key, you can go back to the video on how to decrypt when you know the key and use that to um, decrypt the message. It's simple from there.